truly catastrophic. This is the worst drought to hit South Africa. A paradise in ruins. Rising sea levels and soil Whether erosion. Whether past the point of no return. President Trump believes climate change is a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a this hoax. This could be the most serious recession in decades. Greed is a good thing. Greed is never bad. Austerity is having a devastating effect on people's health. Symbol of a system that's failing. What we really need is collective partnerships, new voices to inspire and to influence because it is clear that the current construct is not carrying us where we need to go. Our planet is a beautiful, rich and abundant place, but there are some who are willing to sacrifice it for the sake of a quick buck. A decade after the financial crisis, the world economy remains unequal unstable and unsustainable. We need to work together to solve these problems. Some people think this is an impossible task, but we've done it before and we can do it again. The first New Deal transformed the economic life of the United States. Then, in the aftermath of the Second World War, countries from around the world came together to agree a new approach to managing the international financial system. The Bretton Woods system wasn't perfect, but it did give power to governments rather than private finance. But in the 1980s, it was destroyed by the coordinated power of big finance and politicians in thrall to free markets. Hyperglobalization is now destroying the planet that we rely on for our very survival. Just 100 companies are responsible for 70% of all global emissions, and just 10% of the world's population is responsible for 50% of all emissions. One of the reasons that globalization has not worked as well as it should have worked is that the rules governing globalization have been written to benefit the corporate interests. We need to rewrite the rules, for instance, of global trade in ways that can work for the advantage of citizens. We have an economy that is structured to benefit a few people at the top at the expense of most people and at the expense of the environment. The environment is a, is a massive um, kind of hidden sufferer from the finance curse, from this, this financial um, drive to maximize profits at all costs. We've had a politics for the last 30 years, more perhaps, that has said there is no alternative. And I think people realize that there is no alternative is, is yesterday's political slogan. We cannot let poor people in poor countries suffer the consequences of a problem that they did not create. Just like in the 1930s, we need a new deal to constrain the power of finance, reduce inequality, and save our planet. But the first question is always, can we afford it? There's a lot of money around, and it is being wasted. Either because it's sitting there doing nothing, except bidding up house prices and asset prices and equities, eh? or uh, it is being put to, to bad use. So that is humanity's greatest uh, task, to utilize existing resources for public good purpose and to redistribute so that shared prosperity becomes a reality rather than just a dream. The global Green New Deal involves a massive mobilization of public and private resources, but it would also mean investing in renewable energy, a more energy-efficient public transport system, and sustainable agricultural practices, along with the creation of skilled jobs in both the North and the South. There needs to be a multilateral coordination of A, national strategies to make sure countries have their policy space to do green structural transformation, and to coordinate them and enhance them on a global basis with financial stability, with redistribution and just transitions, uh, and massive public investment. This is not something that can be done by any country alone. It has to be global, it has to be multilateral. So we need a proper forum that recognizes this and gives adequate space and voice to every member of the international community. We can make the Global Green New Deal a reality, but we need to change the rules. This will involve four key steps. One, a new set of multilateral principles for shared prosperity that allow governments and citizens the freedom and flexibility to build a fair transition to a sustainable future. Two, a new international financial architecture 
governments need access to reliable sources of finance to fund their own development agenda. We need a clamp down on tax avoidance to develop a coordinated approach to international financial regulation and implement a huge debt write-off to relieve developing states from the burden of unpayable debts. Three, a new global trading system. We need a completely different approach to trade, investment and intellectual property rules so that both the rich and poor countries can benefit from international trade and investment. Four, a massive scaling up of national and multilateral development banks to lay the foundation for a just transition. New international development banks are needed to give them the access to the finance they need to mitigate these challenges. Younger and younger people will rise up. Our children will rise up. For it is their lives that is being sacrificed on the altar of greater profits and convenience of a few. That is the force that I believe will be the tipping point to cause nations of the world and to cause powers to understand that it cannot be business as usual. This is a call to organize. This is a call to reorganize and to make sure that we are fighting for a just economy, for a just society, a just environment, and a just future for the world. With international solidarity, we can change the world.